Oh, hey. What's up, guys? This is killing me. So we came in here to catch some fish. It's been a really, really hot day. And a storm just come in. Storm just come in. So the storm just come in. And now we're probably going to get rained on. But in addition to that, I've also misplaced the um, little attachment I used to hold the camera. So I'm constantly going to be... A, I don't know if that showed up, a raindrop just pelted me right in the center of my nose. The light out here. This is going to be a tough one, y'all. Like I said, this is going to be a tough one because I lost... I've lost the attachment that I hold the camera with. And that also means I lost the attachment I hold the camera up with. So I'm trying to... I know it's probably horrible audio right now. All the scratching and the muffling. As they try to put this towel over the camera. Because not only do I need the towel to hold the camera upright, but to keep it dry because it's raining. Anyway, before it started raining, when the water was still flat and calm, I saw this movement on the surface. So I came down here with a couple of things. I'm going to try to pull some carp out today. And normally, you know me, I'm always fishing with bread and corn, and I do have some of that. But I finally buckled down and ordered us some boilies. It's hard to see because it's so dark out here. But I got some boilies here, that tiger nut spice. I've had tremendous success fishing with actual tiger nuts for carp, so I got the tiger nut spice flavored boilies and some pop-ups because we've been having a lot of trouble uh, with weeds in the last couple of attempted video shoots that don't make it to YouTube. Uh, the ones where I go out and spend hours trying to catch fish and don't come up with anything. So a lot of that problem was having all this weed material just bog down the bait and just I'm not getting anything back except for weeds. So hopefully these pop-ups should save us that problem because the idea, I'll show you in a minute, basically it rises or raises the hook <laughs> it's raining full-blown rain do you see that sunshine back there that sunshine is going in a complete circle around us this rain cloud is over us just us to heck with the rain anyway I brought I brought our you know, carp rod here. I think that's the most appropriate for fishing with boilies. I didn't bring a whole lot of ground bait because I think the carp have become so accustomed to feeding in this particular spot that we're not going to need any. Now, I hope the towel doesn't muffle the audio too much. Anyway, here's the rig we're gonna use today. I ended up taking it out of the backpack after all. And I think the uh, experienced carp fishermen that might or might not watch this video will be a little bit more pleased with me now. Originally, I had been using what I called the modified bolt rig, which is basically me using sea fishing tackle to uh, make a bolt rig for carp. So I had a, a flat weight, a three-way swivel, you know, obviously my braided line and my hook link. And uh, it worked well enough, but I've actually buckled down and bought some really good, um, proper carp fishing tackle. So what I've got is I've got my main line here going down to this inline weight. It's about two ounces. And then the swivel is hidden inside the weight, and I'll show you why in a second. But here comes my braided line. I've just got, I don't have the fancy tungsten putty lead to hold the pop-up down, but I've just got a, a really hefty BB shot. So here's the short amount of line that will kind of come off the bottom. So I've got a hair rig, which I don't typically use because I don't use boilies or pop-ups normally, but I've got a hair rig with an actual stopper on the bottom on my carp hook here. So the idea is this is a pop-up, these float. And if you're a carp fisherman, you already know this, but if you're new to it, this might come in handy. So you cast this out. This blends into the bottom pretty well. You know, ideally you kind of feather the line as it's going out. So instead of this all landing in a clump, as it's casted, you slow it down and it, it arcs like this, boom. So when it lands, it lands nice and stretched out like that. This weight obviously holds the bottom and the pop-up floats up and it kind of presents the bait above the surface of the, uh, or above the lake bed here, which might be covered in weed or leaves and things like that. And a carp can find your bait in amongst those things, but this just really ups your chances 
So the hair rig, the carp sucks it in without feeling the hook, blows it back out, out of his mouth, because that's what carps do constantly. If you notice when I catch one, its mouth is still doing that motion. As it blows it back out, the hook catches the lower lip. As it turns to move away, it encounters the resistance of the lead, and it sets the hook, off the fish goes. Now if I lose the fish, and this is the part that's going to make a lot of the uh, experienced fishermen a little bit more happy with me, instead of that three-way swivel, this inline lead has a safety feature. So if that fish breaks my line and it's towing around this two ounce lead in its mouth, what's going to happen, I'm going to try to do this without setting the hook into my fingernail here. There we go. See how that inline structure popped out? If the line breaks, basically the fish can pull the line through. This plastic tab actually comes right out. If you push it, there he goes, it comes out of the lead. And the fish can swim away with just the hook in its mouth, which is much more likely to fall out and not bother the fish uh, so much in the meantime as it would if there was this huge lead attached to it. Anyway, all that being said, let's get this line in the water. I do love this setup, by the way. This carp rod with this OC reel here from Shimano. I don't plug brands a whole lot, but man, this Fox three pound uh, test curve rod which again, a bit overkill for most carp, but I also use it for catfish, which get immense. Add it up with this reel, really does make a phenomenal carp fishing rod. So I'm just gonna toss it out here, and I'll maybe crush up some boilies and kind of throw it on top, just to kind of add a little hint of that ground bait. I'm just gonna underhand pitch this, guys. Right there, because that's where I saw the fish. Throw some of this corn out there that I brought with me. Kind of sprinkle this in the area around where that pop-up is sitting. All right, guys, I think we got our first fish on. Yep, there it is. First fish, looks like a, looks like a catfish. Yes, it is a catfish. Hoist him up, here we go. Not a bad channel catfish. I'm trying to be a little bit more appreciative of the catfish than I have been recently. They're not all bad. Besides, at least now you can't say I blanked out here. Look at the, uh, whew. You know what, changed my mind. I can't stand catfish. Oh, little channel catfish. Not too bad. First fish of the day. At least, at least that's a sign that the fish have kind of picked up on the bait that's in the water. And are, and are moving in now, so let's put this guy back. And look, I want to show you something. I have to wipe my hands off because of all this catfish slime. However, that also means you need to have a good look at your fishing line. Because a lot of the times they will slime the line. You can see right there that kind of congealed slime that's on the line right there. And if I just kind of squeeze my fingers across the line and pull it down, yeah, you can see all that slime right there, just sitting on my thumb. It's important to get off, get that off your fishing line. And the reason I think that's so is because fish produce extra slime when they're stressed. Any other fish smelling this on your line is going to immediately know that somewhere in the vicinity that they are trying to feed, a fish is in distress, and that is going to put them on alert. And I think they're much less likely to take your bait. A fish moving into an area on edge is much less likely to take your hook bait. And if they smell that slime, I believe that puts other fish in distress. So unless you're fishing, you know, for a predator, like you know, alligator gar or a pike or something like that, uh, I would highly recommend you get all that slime off your line before you throw it back out there.
second fish, little sunfish, tiny little guy. And what I caught him on was a piece of corn. I've been having a lot of issues today getting these boilies to work out. And I think part of it just has to do with the fact that the carp aren't feeding in this area right now. I probably, uh, it would have paid off if I had spent a little bit more time mixing a ground bait to take down here. I think the rain has washed a lot of sediment into the lake and that's kind of just colored up the water and turned some of the fish off. But anyway, what I've noticed is that if I throw in a little piece of corn, a single kernel of corn on a tiny little size 10 hook, these perch, they just take it on the drop. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to leave the camera rolling. Uh, and I'm gonna roll. Okay, here we go. Corn. I'm just gonna put one little kernel of corn on, cast it out, and see if I can get a take on camera as it drops to the bottom within seconds. I'm gonna see how long it takes for a bite to occur. So I'm just gonna barely hook it in so it's just right there, you can see, right on the tip, and the tip is exposed, you can see it better that way. So that little, little sunfish's mouth, when it's over the bait, it is also over the point of my hook. All right, so I'm gonna tell you when it hits the water. Now. Tighten up to it. Okay, we're tight to the bait. Come on guys, don't embarrass me. Oh, 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 I lost one. Ah, oh, man. Okay, okay. So there was one on, I didn't realize it. Got my bait back though. All right, let's try again. Single take, I'm not cutting the camera yet. All right. Bait's in the water. We're tight to the bait. Tighten back up to the bait. Oh, yep, yeah, got one on, got one on. Pick it up again, buddy, come on. Something just picked it up and dropped it. I was too, I didn't set the hook, I was too slow. All right, new plan, float fishing. Straighten the flipping camera. There we go. Yeah. Decent depth to it, maybe three feet. I think that's about where they're taken. See how long this takes. I get a, see, I've got that little loop on my spool right there. That's from that really poor attempt at fly casting. Get out of there. There we go. As long as I can get that off the spool, I'll be okay. Try that again. There we go. That's a better one. Yep, here we go. Got him! <laughs> oh, he's a, woo. I was gonna say he put up a little bit of a scrap for being such a small fish. Here you go, little sunfish. Pretty, pretty fish.
You can see the size, just look where the hook set is. Look at the size of his mouth, it's so small. So small, that's why I really think it pays to just have your bait, when you're, when you're fishing for sunfish, just on the tip of your hook, just enough for that mouth to go over it. There's one, there's one right there. Lovely little fish. I know we it got fading light out here, but man, there's some really brilliant turquoise pattern in that dorsal dorsal fin with a little eye spot back here. A lot of blue and yellow. All right, we'll put him back. Let's see if we can get another one. See, this is the type of fishing that I like. Not not necessarily saying that oh, I just want to catch sunfish. You know, I don't want to catch anything more exciting, but I love the fact that I've got a leftover can of corn, some of which you know has mold on it. I've had this one for a while, and I can put on the tiniest of hooks and come out here on a rather unassuming day and still catch some really, really lovely, lovely fish. I think uh, the more you can learn to enjoy just catching fish, and what I mean by that is not be, you know, hell-bent on breaking your PB or setting a world record or sometimes not even just minding so much what species you catch. You can have a lot more fun a lot more often. All right, let me adjust you guys so you can see a bit more of the water here. There we go. No, there, for now. All right, I'm gonna try to pitch this re for gosh sakes. I'm cursed, guys. First. All right, I'm going to try to pitch this where you can see the float in view. What you're going to see is more than likely you're going to see it floating on the surface of the water. Instead of it dipping down below the surface like so, you're probably going to see it tilt and start running across the surface like that. That's what I think is going to happen. Can you guys see that? Is that in frame? Where is that? There he is. Yeah, kind of. Oh, look, it's already getting some action. See it? See it? There it goes. Can you see that moving? It's already a sunfish on it. So, oh, got him. Come here, buddy. Ta-da! Ah. Gently unhook them. You don't want to damage these fish. Oh, look at the gorgeous stripes on this guy. You can see it now. The sun has just begun to set where it's coming through the tree line, which it wasn't before, and now you can really see the lovely colors on this fish. This is gonna be the uh, thumbnail photo, so pose for a photo here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough. Get out of here, buddy. Say hello to your mother for me. You know, on the one hand, I'm kinda happy that we're catching these little fish. On the other hand, I paid a lot of money for those boilies. Just saying, they'll work, trust me. We'll make a video where those boilies will work out. And I'll get better at using them too. I'm gonna try to get this one where you can see it a little bit better. I want it in frame. There it is, there it is. Now that's, that's, a, that's a good spot for it to be. All right, that was me moving it. Let's see how long it takes to kind of move around a bit, maybe start darting off. try to get it. I'm going to shallow up the float a little bit. I'm going to throw it in the same general direction, but a little bit further out. When you're casting uh, with a float, here I am. I know you want to see me. When you're casting with a float that also has weight on the line, you fish on. You got to be um, cognizant of the arc of the line, uh, centrifugal force and inertia and the way it's going to flip the line over because it's, you know, it's got weight where the float is, but it's got more weight where the bait, or I mean, sorry, where the lead is, and then a little bit of weight where the bait is. And all of that is playing differently on the line as it goes through its arc. I bet you if I just set into this fish here, we'll catch it. And notice, I don't pop it. It's not like, oh, I got the fish. I'm going to set the hook real hard. Yeah, look at him. He's going after it. I'm just gonna kinda pull sideways into him. 
the next moment that he kind of shows that he's still there, yeah, he's still there. Oh, we missed him. But we got our bait back, which is good. What I like to do when I set the hook on perch is I just like to kind of hold it out there for them and kind of gently draw it into the side of their mouth. Anything more than that, you're going to rip it right out of their mouth. And not only will you probably kill the fish, which you know me, I don't like to kill fish. Not only will you probably kill the fish, but uh, you're probably going to lose it too because it's going to rip right out of his mouth. trying to see whenever you guys see me do this by the way when you see me talking to the camera and I start looking like this I'm trying to see there we go if what I want to show up on camera is visible come on buddy nope didn't get that one but you can see the way they're pulling the bait further down the shank of the hook so let me just there we go, run it up through the top. Bet you, if I just stop talking and pay attention, we'll get one. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but way out there, what looks like a little tiny log on the surface of the water, that's actually a small owl. Oh, oh, my foot's dancing now. That's a small alligator out there. And he might, uh, might be on his way over. There's also a big snake in the water. Good grief. People walking by are looking at me like he's talking to himself. So yeah, I stole my bait. So yeah, we've got all these sunfish here. Out there is an alligator and a huge snake just took off across the surface of the pond back there. It's one of the things I really need to get like a uh, telescopic lens that can fit on my uh, smartphone because if it's not apparent, all my videos are filmed on this smartphone, which it does the job. And as far as smartphones go, the Galaxy S7 is pretty good with uh, its camera feature. Oh, oh, right away, right away, we got one. And uh, Right away, I missed it. <laughs> Little kid over there. I'm going to do this uh, Marlon Brando thing for you guys constantly where I'm like just kind of poking my head out. Are you here to kill me? Are you a soldier or an assassin? You're neither. You're an errand boy sent by grocery clerks. To collect a bill. Anyway, this little kid over there, super excited. He's like, Dad, 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 there's a fish in the water. And what he's looking at, he's looking at all these gar. He's getting super excited. Oh man, I thought for sure we'd have that one. Ah, they're taking so quick. So quick, these guys. That's the thing about these hooks I'm using, by the way. These hooks, um, they're eagle claw hooks, which are decent hooks. People underrate them. Um, this is a size 10. I once used a size 8 and caught a 32-inch redfish. Not on, not on purpose, but I was bait fishing with a tiny, tiny little hook and a um, tiny little piece of shrimp on it, and that redfish ran off with it, and I was able to, to land it. So they're not, they're not awful hooks, but they're not super sharp either. So when you just need... Yeah, got that one. Oh, and he got off. Man, man. When you need a super sharp hook that will set with just the flick of a wrist, look at look what he did to that piece of corn. That was a big one. These may not be your best bet. I mean, again, I don't like to plug brands or anything, but Gamakatsu and Owner are among the sharpest hooks you can find for a reasonable price. I just can't ever find any this small. I can find them close to that, but not quite that small. It's 
very hard to stay tight to a float without pulling it out of position. I'm just kind of move it a little bit. He might have taken that bait off. I would have expected it to move again if he hadn't. Do I know my stuff or do I know my stuff? Yeah, but if you knew your stuff, you'd have caught the fish. I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna cast over that way. Just kind of into those reeds. That looked like a good spot for fish to lie up, especially small fish. See if we get a bite over there. Yep, something on. Something interested. Not necessarily committed. It's exactly what was wrong with my ex. Gulps. Outfishes all other baits. That is a bold claim. Let's put it to... Put it to the test. So anyway, that's what they look like. Look like little maggots or little worms, which both make incredible baits. So let's use an artificial one. I'm just gonna slide it over the hook. And by the way, these are a lot tougher, a whole lot tougher than the kernels of corn I was using. So I can probably, Realistically, if it's just sunfish that we're catching, and it's not like catfish or anything, I could probably use one of these for the rest of the evening and be okay. Just going to make sure I don't... There we go. I want to cover the hook tip. Slide it down, slide it back. Just like that. You can see much tougher bait, much closer to the hook than that corn that was kind of jetting off of it. So let's see if we can catch a fish like this. See if I can set a record for the most strikes missed in one minute. Okay, that one, that one, yeah. I was going to say, that one was committed. Oh, look at that. The biggest one we've caught yet. That's a lovely sunfish. Good grief. Check you out. Really, really pretty fish. See the stripes on it? Just... Uh, you can't, you can't not like it. You can't not like fish. And look right here. God, one of these days I'm going to stop doing that. I promise. Promise. Okay, this is a better grip. Look at his eye. Look at his eye. See that? It's a Jeremy Wade thing. It looks a little better when he does it with a big piranha. But anyway, the orange in the interior of the eye is so cool. Put him back. Man, I'm, I'm amazed at how many are out here. Just no matter where I put this bait, there seems to be a fish that finds it. That's just a testament to how many there are. Oh, there's our snake friend coming back. I lost him over there and then he went around and now he's coming back. You'll probably see him cross the camera frame again. Yeah, here he comes. There he is. See him right there, right there, right with the tip of my finger right there. I'm drawing in the water. Pretty sure that's the same one. That is really cool. I love snakes. About on par with how much I love fish, honestly. Well, guys, I could stay out here all night, but unfortunately, it would be for naught because you wouldn't see a thing. I'm gonna hang up the gloves, call it quits for this evening. 
hopefully we'll get something a little bit more exciting tomorrow but hey we caught fish and that's sometimes all you can ask for it is a nice night though got a full moon in front of me beautiful sunset behind me lots of fish sounds of the nighttime so I'm gonna head inside and first I'm gonna check on my other line which is acting like there's a fish on it typical anyway I'm gonna pack up I'll see you guys later